Hey everybody, this is Ren here and welcome to a new lesson today. We're going to have a look at the game played in the first round of the US Championship between Larry Christensen and, and uh, Alexander Shavalov. Okay. Game was E4, C5, Knight C3 and then mm, Knight C6. Knight F3 and now Shavalov played G6 which uh, is heading for the Sicilian Dragon. At this point he can try also moves like e5 which forces white to continue with bishop c4 and the game uh, pretty much resembles a, a Spanish type of, of game. White would play d3, knight d5, c3 and also knight f6 in this position in which White can try to uh, transpose to the normal Sicilian with uh, the move d4, but he also has bishop b5, which uh, scores rather well for White. Okay, but this just uh, it is just uh, a, an opening choice. It's not really anything significant. Okay, g6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes bishop g7 all common theory. Bishop c4 first here is very well known that f3 is a mistake because uh, queen b6 exposes the unprotected position of the bishop on e3 so first bishop c4 castle and then bishop b3 that's the correct move again uh, f3 I think it can be met not only with queen b6 but even d5 is is interesting as far as I'm concerned here. Not don't know so much about the theory, but I think f3 d5 black opens the position in a way that uh, white is a little bit uh, behind in development. I mean, he's not ready yet. He hasn't played queen d2, and after, for example, f3 d5 e takes d5 uh, knight b4. Black is recapturing uh, the pawn on d5 immediately, and the king is in, in the center. So it's not it's, it's complications that White would like to avoid. Also, f3 queen b6 is should be interesting too. So bishop b3 is the correct move order for those who don't know. But this is like I said before, common theory. Uh, most people know this already. So and now Black plays d6, heading to the main lines of the dragon variation. Other obscure moves are uh, a5 for example intending a4 and also queen a5 those are uh, more uh, unexplored moves than d6 which immediately transposes to the uh, regular lines of in the in the dragon variation. After d6 f3, bishop d7, queen d2. Now, of course, black can go for the mm, Yugoslav attack with uh, rook c8, but there is a modern line that uh, f works very well for black that is taken immediately on d4 with this move, knight takes d4, and after bishop takes d4, start uh, launching the pawns on the queen side by playing b5, followed by uh, a5. That's the one of the I think most acceptable lines in the in the dragon for black. Now, black, uh, I mean white, played short castle. Of course, queenside castle uh, allows. A5 with a very scary attack here on the queen side, so the best, the clever thing is to castle king side. And now Shavalov played A5, which is a move that, um, while it's not a mistake, perhaps, in my opinion, not uh, not the best. In my opinion, when I studied the line for black, I remember I focused my attention on the move before. And yeah, after knight d5, knight takes basically because it's very direct and, and forceful, so black can count on this. 
after he takes d5, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4 and now in this position uh, okay white uh, has a, a space advantage and he can put pressure on the uh, e7 pawn but it, it looks like black can defend very easily here queen b6 is very interesting trying to go for the end game uh, the pawn on e7 can be defended by just rook f e8 and king f8 and even e5 at some point trying to to free uh, release the pressure on the e file and the 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 main drawback in the in white's position is that the bishop on b3 is very passive but is also necessary to defend the pawns on on c2 and a2 that can come on, the, on their attack in in the end game so the the situation is level i think now for example a5 rook f e1 rook e8 um also a4 looks interesting here then after bishop c4 rook e8 rook e2 trying to put uh, pressure on the e file rook b8 and then bishop b5 position looks very uh, very equal and perhaps I would take black in this position. White play here, king f1, queen d7 takes, and then rook b7. Black is extremely solid, and then he's ready to take over the c file, and everything is protected. If queen takes b5, rook takes b5, and the d5 pawn is also a weakness. So you can see the type of of fight that there is a, a going on in this position so this is something that black can achieve by playing b4 or move uh, 12 also Van Wely tried here uh, rook e8 there is no need to play a4 as well then after h4 this is Zutowski playing with white he tried to put the pawn on h6 to create some mate threats but black defended very well with rook queen c7 first h5 and then rook c8 and black is some time to play queen c5 which either uh, trades the queens or activates the queens so there is no real time for for white to to create any attack after h6 queen c5 the game was about equal but black ended up winning takes takes and f5 to centralize the king defend e7 and then he can use the other rook for the b file and I start uh, thinking at some point about uh, playing a4 if possible okay so let's go back to the game this is something that mm, those who play this variation should consider in my opinion b4 is uh, is probably what deserves more attention in this position then if white doesn't play knight d5 if he plays knight d2 then a5 is immediately harassing the bishop on b3 so this looks like a, the best move order in my opinion a5 was split then a3 bishop c6 normal trying to play knight d7 and trade the dark square uh, bishops the problem that now whenever black decides to play uh, before he must uh, take in consideration that after a takes and a takes before when the knight moves there is a weak pawn on before so now there is something else to consider here instead of bishop c6 perhaps a move like queen b8 is interesting as well trying to play rook fc8 and also b4 supporting b4 and considering to take with the queen that might be a good plan not bishop c6 but queen b8 and play more active with b4 in the future but bishop c6 I have to say is a normal idea in the dragon and uh, the fact is that Larry Christensen already played this position with white against uh, Tibiakov uh, years ago then uh, w in this game white uh, went rook a to the one previously Larry played king h1 then after queen b8 he went knight d5 that time against Tiviakov he played uh, very direct then after bishop takes, pawn takes, knight d7 this is the uh, strategy uh, for black he trades the 
dark square bishops and then he end he has a good knight in a dark square uh, versus a very bad bishop on b3 on the other hand he has less space and white can put pressure on the king's side and also on the e-file that's what Larry did rook e1 rook e8 and c3 to to be able to play the um, bishop c2 rook e4 rook h4 rook h8 black defense very well but, but this position uh, I don't want to to fool you about this it looks like white is on the attack and it looks like uh, he has he, he's putting pressure and he is but it's not mm, it's not something that uh, is defined yet what I mean is that white doesn't have anything in in reality here I mean not yet actually after rook e1 knight f6 the rook on h4 is not doing anything anymore so rook c8 and then black is organizing his pieces and he's very solid there is nothing really and the threat of b4 of course at some point uh, he wants to play b4 and open that file there King h2, queen d7, bishop d1, the bishop wants to go to f3, have some more uh, activity on this square, rook c4, and queen c7, black went on to win this position, you can see that there has been a few moves already and white doesn't get anything uh, concrete yet, and with the trade of rooks there is not enough pressure in, on e7, so I, I think the position is about equal in this pos uh, right now. Uh, G4, King G8, Larry tried hard to win this game. But uh, after H4, Knight G7, there is no real chance to play H5. The move Knight F5 is a threat, so Bishop G4 and then B4, Black uh, starts uh, to counterplay on the Queen side. Takes, takes. And now c4, of course, it takes before allows queen c1 with uh, great complications and also a simple move like putting pressure with queen b7 also might be interesting. So c4 and then rook a8, king g2, queen b7. Tivyakov went on to win this game later on. But in this game, mm, I think uh, Larry played uh, another natural move that is rook a to the one is normal move just bring the rooks to the center also rook f e1 uh, is in the cards for the future and now rook c8 i don't want to be too rough on this move but i don't really like it the the rook on c8 is somehow uh, misplaced because if you want to attack the queen side with b4 and uh, then the rook is better on a8 Perhaps a move like Queen C7 is the best uh, with the idea of B4. For example, if White now tries to do what he did in the game with Queen F2, then B4. Queen F2 doesn't make it much sense after Queen C7, but I just want to show you what the idea is after B4 takes, takes, Knight D5, Knight takes, Pawn takes, and now black has bishop a4 you can see the differences in in the position with the rook on a8 if if the queen side is open the rook is better on a8 I have to also mention that the move queen b8 should be possible as well but I think white still keeps a small advantage or a small pressure with rook f1 and after knight d7 bishop takes king takes and knight d2 followed by knight d4 or even instead of bishop takes e7 knight d2 immediately um, there aren't many useful moves for black in this position he can just wait he should just wait here maybe knight d5 but uh, trying to play knight c4 but in general I think that white chances are slightly better okay but in this position like I said before Queen C7 looks uh, good with an equal position 
he went rook c8 I think black is mixing some ideas uh, in the position queen f2 threatening bishop b6 this is a clever move uh, taking advantage of the rook move immediately the threat is, b is bishop b6 followed by bishop takes on a5 knight d7 and knight e2 yeah, it's a good move bishop b7 bishop takes, king takes and now knight d4 threatening the pawn on b5 but also he has some ideas in mind um, for example I only see this now bishop e6 uh, I'm not sure if white wants to trade the bishop for the knight in principle yes because the knight on d4 is definitely stronger than the bishop on b7 which is passive and collapses against the pawn chain on e4 f3 the knight on d4 is really strong so um, maybe bishop b6 is an idea okay now Shavalov played uh, b4 I, I'm sorry I'm sorry this is not uh, what he played uh, he played queen b6 and let's see of course the alternative is b4 and after pawn takes takes rook f e1 white uh, is slightly better but nothing serious I think maybe maybe queen c7 is an idea here okay but queen c7 means that uh, bishop e6 might work I still think that this was better than the game maybe right now knight c5 trying to go after the bishop although I have to say knight c5 e5 looks really scary so I'm not sure I'm not sure I could I could uh, suggest a move here for black maybe rook c5 everything looks rather suspicious that's why uh, probably Shavalov played uh, queen b6 And then Larry found the move uh, e5. Yeah, a very strong move. And let me explain before. Uh, okay, he must do something because after knight c5, white is uh, black is coordinating uh, the pieces. So, but the move is e5, which creates some real problems for for black of course knight takes e5 is impossible because of knight f5 and so this leaves only one alternative and that is d takes on e5 the idea behind this move is that knight e6 that's the idea be behind uh, e5 f takes on e6 rook takes on e7 and white has a better end game queen takes on f2 rook takes but I have to say one thing it's not so clear to me that um, black cannot hold this endgame that's something that we must uh, we must see for example after bishop d5 if bishop takes d5 well first of all rook takes on e7 is not good because after king f6 rook takes on h7 bishop takes rook c1 check black's activity is enough compensation ideas of rook f rook d8 and rook d2 of course and also he's taking immediately the b2 pawn and the b3 pawn as well so this is this brings nothing for for white he should try instead bishop takes on d5 he takes d5 and now rook takes d5 but here black has a very strong move that is e4 the plan is uh, to take on f3 and continue with rook f5 for example if if white plays something like rook e5 then pawn takes on f3 and maybe king f uh, maybe mm, mm, i think if it if rook e5 yeah take on f3 and rook f5 should uh, 
should be it. But I, I'm, then I'm not sure what to do about the pawn on e7. I have to think about this. Oh, oh okay. It seems seems like rook e5 uh, refused my idea. Okay, e4. What I had seen before it was uh, rook takes on b5, of course. But then e3 and after rook e2, rook fd8 with with enough, uh, enough uh, activity, with the threat of uh, rook d2 and the next move then if h4 to release uh, the king on, on the 8th rank then after rook d2, rook takes on e3 rook c2, rook g5 king f6 it's a pretty line uh, white has material advantage but uh, black is very active in this rook endgame and after b4, pawn takes a6 and now rook g3 only move in, in case of rook g4 black would go h5 and after rook g5 here he can play rook c4 attacking b4 and also h4 so rook g3 and then e5 and it's a pretty position because black's rooks are very active and white rooks completely the opposite uh, so it's compensation I think I'm not sure why I can win, but of course, like I said, I just found that uh, here rook e5, something that didn't occur to me, uh, might be the best. Although, I have to say, rook e5, king f6, rook takes on e4, and then e5, something like that, or rook fd8, maybe black can hold it's only uh, down one pawn and it's a rook endgame so it's not I'm not really sure 3 against 2 on the queen side only and of course he has the weakness on e7 but I think this is the it, this was the best chance the move played in the game is simply to I mean it's very compromised it's a move d5 um, when you see when you have to play such a move then something is really going wrong uh, the bishop on b7 now looks very passive and there is no prospect uh, of improving it Larry played f4 and the game looks like a good type of french uh, for white e6 now there is big weakness on the dark squares around the king king h1 and rook f e1. Okay, knight e5. Of course, now let's see if why why knight e5. Well, at first I thought that black could play a4, bishop a2, and then b4, uh, preventing white from consolidating his position on the queen side. Now, if white takes on b4, after queen takes, black has enough activity on the queen side. The problem is, and probably what Shavalov saw is that white had a very strong attack starting with f5 a very nice rupture and after g takes on f5 bishop takes on d5 and black cannot take because of e6 with a winning attack so uh, of course after f5 it takes on f5 e6 white is winning as well so he had to play knight c5, rook e3, Larry begins a dark square strategy, all the pieces to the dark squares and uh, try to use the rook on the on the third rank against the, the black king. So queen d8, h3, perhaps this move was not necessary but c3 was already good with the idea of bishop c2 then if he takes after knight takes b4 only move and otherwise he will uh, suffer after knight d4 and b4 and white is still is better an extra pawn and complete control of the dark square but instead Larry chose to play a3 and Chavalov played queen e7 ok 
Okay, again continue with c3, normal idea to bring the bishop back to c2 and also to control the advance with uh, black's advance of uh, the b pawn. Knight e4, queen e1, best square for the queen. And white is ready to play bishop c2 and get rid of the knight on e4. There is very little that black can do here. Everything would lead to to a weakness. He would he would have to try f6. Um, but this would weaken seriously the the e6 pawn and white has things like rook takes on e4 and knight takes on e6 getting back his exchange with a very strong attack as well so it's impossible for black to create active play as a consequence he, he cannot do anything against the threat of bishop c2 and bishop takes on e4 which would lead to a position that black has a very bad bishop on a6 versus a very strong knight on d4 and on top of everything the weaknesses on the dark squares around the the black king that's something very serious so now he played rook c5 instead of rook c5 he may have uh, played knight c5 which is a, a little better but after bishop c2 white still has the advantage Okay, nice e5 hoping for complications with f5 for example which in principle look good for white but probably the best is to avoid them after g takes on f5 bishop takes d5 king h8 is a good move getting the king out of the danger b4 knight a4 and then knight c6 blocking the c file queen g5 rook g3 queen h6 bishop h3 Bishop f3, sorry. Okay, if we look at this position, white is clearly better. There are ideas with rook d6 and size the initiative on the on the d file. But if you have to compare this position to uh, this one here, probably it's better to play bishop c2 and avoid all type of complications in which white, uh, uh, black can find some counterplay. After bishop c2 white can continue with the same plan uh, in the game so there is th it doesn't make much difference f uh, what black plays this is what I mean. Okay, Rook c5 bishop c2 Rook f c8 black is hoping to play b4 at some point and now Larry played bishop takes on e4 and I would like to explain this move, it's a practical decision also interesting was knight b3 and very hard to say why didn't he play it because I'm sure he saw it perhaps he was fearing something like a4 but I have my doubts that black can, can hold this position I think uh, white should win I have to say that after knight b3, any rook move, rook c7, bishop takes on a4, d takes on a4, knight takes on a5, uh, looks easily winning for white. Rook d6, he can even take on a4 already, black has no ruptures, no active play. So, knight b3, the only thing that I can think of is that perhaps black was going to close the, shut the queen side with a4. But even so, after knight d4 here, if you don't want to take the exchange in order to keep a knight in these positions, knight d4 followed by bishop takes on e4 and the game should be clearly better for white. Okay, Lavery took this practical decision immediately, uh, getting rid of the only piece that can change the position for black, the knight. After d takes on e4, he doesn't want to take the pawn because it would open the diagonal a8 h1 so he plays b4 this is a common idea here to secure the position of the knight to keep the bishop on a6 completely shot fix the weakness on b5 and of course white creates himself a weakness on c3 but it can be easily uh, defended from active squares so there is nothing to worry about rook c4 queen d3 you can see the queen on the third rank 
uh, attacks but also defense uh, c3 king f8 there are ideas with uh, f5 knight b3 forcing black to make a decision on the queen side after pawn takes a takes b4 bishop b7 and now rook d6 Yeah, rook d6, moving the rook forward, so when he shuts the board with knight d4, the rook is left in black's camp, very active. Black plays rook c7. After bishop d5, knight d4, rook b8, king h2, there are many useful moves for, uh, for black there isn't much improvement but this is probably the best still just to keep there hang on to this position instead Shabalov chose to play rook c7 he's also waiting but not the best way to wait after knight d4 the bishop goes into a passive position on e8 bishop c6 king h2 bishop e8 and now queen e1 Okay, now this is uh, where this is the critical position for uh, for Black, where he made his last mistake. First of all, he should have played Rook C4. Just keep there, hang on to this position. It's very, it's very sad. It's very passive. But he has to keep the pressure on C3 and also the possibility of uh, G5 undermining the the pawn chain f4 e5 and activating the queen so white must watch out for these two uh, counterplay actions the pressure on c3 and the advance g5 instead Chavalov plays rook d8 which uh, trace the the active the active pieces the active rooks and after rook takes on d8, queen takes on d8, white doesn't have to worry anymore about anything. Not There is no more pressure on c3 and definitely there is not any counterplay with g5. So after rook takes on e4, black doesn't have enough pressure uh, on, on, any, on c3. The, in this case the only weak point in, in white's position. After queen d5, rook e3, bishop c6, queen d3, everything is easily defended, everything in dark squares and black can do anything uh, against this, uh, against uh, the plan queen g5, h4, h5, rook g3 or rook h3 so Chava played bishop b7, queen g5, rook c8, rook g3 defending the g2 mate so he can move the queen around king g8 and now h4 again if uh, if h5 I think yeah I think white can try queen f6 with the idea of knight takes on e6 yeah th this is this is possible if rook takes on c3 now knight takes on e6 seems to win so h4 h6 was played by Shavalov and then after queen takes on h6 he played rook c3 and now the final the final blow here knight takes on e6 and after okay black resigns here because after f takes on e6 rook takes leads to mate and queen takes on e6 rook takes on c3 is a decisive material advantage so Chevalov had nothing better than resigning okay okay everyone thanks for watching this is the first round of the US championship and a very good start for for uh, for Larry okay uh, any comments as usual, leave it on the form. Thank you.